Hello everyone, welcome to Textalgia. Today we are looking at this early 2008 Mac Pro. Now this machine has two 2.8 GHz quad-core Xeons, 32 GB of 800 MHz DDR2 memory, and an ATI Radeon HD 2600 XT with 256 MB. I originally purchased this in a bundle with the monitor, printer, keyboard, and speakers. And I intended to sell the bundle for the same price that I bought it for, excluding the printer and speakers, which I wanted to use for myself. However, I wound up selling the monitor to a friend of mine uh, separately, and I used the speakers until they broke. The printer is still my main printer today. Now, in this video, I'm gonna install a ATI Radeon HD 5770 uh, with one gateway as uh, a little upgrade. It's still pretty old and it's not supported by Metal and Mac OS. Um, but thanks to the Open Core Legacy Patcher, we're still able to use this on last year's operating system. I am going to move the USB card that was sold to me inside of the system and use that inside of my main Hackintosh system. So I have some more USB ports there before I inevitably sell this machine. Uh, we will not be installing Sequoia today, unfortunately, which is the current OS at the time of making this video, but we can install Sonoma. This is due to an issue with dual CPUs in these early 2008 Mac Pros. Sequoia would be limited to one CPU, and that's just not acceptable for this 2008 workhorse. It's still perfectly capable with little attention. We definitely want to take full use of both of those CPUs. Now, jumping into the upgrade to the internals, I started by removing the door to gain access to the inside. With that removed, I began disassembling the PCI retaining bracket. Now, this is actually a custom design by Apple that I actually find really cool. It makes working inside of these toolless. With that out, I can begin removing the PCI cards I no longer want inside of this Mac. And I started with the USB card. Now this card is just a simple four port USB card by Inatech. And it's definitely a useful little card. I don't want to let go at the moment and it will serve well inside of my main Hackintosh. Next, I removed the old graphics card. I'm not very familiar with this card. However, I did receive a free Mac Pro on Marketplace that had this HD 5770 that we're installing today inside of it. I do plan on making a future video on that machine and we're going to install an RX 580 in that and I'm going to keep that Mac Pro. Now I can install my new card as well as replace the PCI cover for the USB ports that we removed with the extra cover we have now gained from installing a dual slot card. And after that's done, we can screw the retaining bracket back on to the PCI slots. Now, the HD5770 does require additional power from the machine, so we will be using one out of two of the PCI power jumpers on the motherboard using a special cable that also came with my other Mac Pro. Now, connect it to the Mac Pro and then to the back of the card. It's definitely a little tight inside there working on this. It was one of the harder parts of this upgrade to complete. Now, with all of the internal upgrades complete, we can throw the door back on and get ready for our OS install. Now, either on your current install of Mac OS on your Mac Pro or a different Mac, we're going to use the Open Core app to create our installer. Now, obviously, I went with Sonoma. And now the app will download the installer for us. Now that we have our OS downloaded, we're going to go back to the Create Installer tab and select our Sonoma installer. And now we're going to install it onto a 16 gigabyte or larger USB flash drive. It's always a good rule of thumb to check disk utility and make sure that you're going to be selecting the right disk before you get it started. Once you've gone on ahead and verified that, you can create your installer.
Now, before we can boot this Mac OS on this old machine, we need the bootloader. But first, we need to make sure the target system is specified inside of the OpenCore settings. Now we can install OpenCore and make sure we are going to the correct USB flash drive that we prepped earlier. Here we are booting into the installer now. I am doing this by holding option after pressing the power button. Once we get to the Mac OS boot picker, we need to select our open core flash drive. And then once we get to the open core bootloader, we can start our Mac OS installer. Thanks to the verbose mode boot argument we have enabled, we get this real time error reporting that we can use if we run into any issues on startup. Now we are finally in the installer. I'm gonna go straight into disk utility to erase and format the drive I plan to use. I'm going to change the settings to show all devices, and I'm going to format my drive APFS and GUID partition map. I'm going to name it Macintosh HD, and once it is formatted, I'm going to go straight into installing. To avoid the error code that I received, just make sure that your Mac is connected to Ethernet as you need it to complete the install and your wireless will not work without the drivers that we're going to install after installing the operating system. Now that we have the installer properly running, I'm going to simply select the drive I formatted and let the operating system install. I eventually found this, which basically just shows a real-time progress of the install, which I thought was pretty cool, so I decided to throw it in the video here to show you guys. The system will eventually call for a restart, and you just want to handle that the same way you have handled starting it with OpenCore previously. Only this time, we'll be booting into the install macOS option located on our internal hard drive we are targeting. At this point, you'll just be on a Apple logo with a progress bar and a time estimate. And it's going to take quite a bit of time for this to complete. After the install finishes, the system will restart again, and we will use OpenCore to boot as we have for the whole process. Only this time we are booting from the name of the drive that we created earlier, Macintosh HD. And just like that, getting to the welcome screen is our first major milestone of the video. Obviously, we can tell it's not quite running perfectly yet. We do need our post-install drivers. However, we will continue running through the welcome screen as normal until we reach the desktop. Once we do reach the desktop, our first priority should be installing the OpenCore Legacy Badger. I simply brought this over from my Hackintosh to the Mac Pro using the flash drive that we use to complete the initial install. With the Legacy Patcher installed, we can now install the OpenCore bootloader locally to the Mac Pro by installing to the same drive that we installed Mac OS 2 earlier. Once this process is finishes, it will call for another restart. After the system restarts, we can start working on our root patches. Luckily for us, the software automatically detects the patches that we need to install them for us. Now, this process will take quite some time, but it will ask you for a reboot when it was when it is completed, so we can go ahead and reboot and move on to the next step. And at this point, the Mac Pro should be working pretty smooth. At this point, I do go ahead and show a YouTube video getting pulled up just to give you guys an idea of how normal use is. But one of the only things I noticed about this was that the disk drive was not being recognized properly. I also couldn't get it to eject. I also noticed that my Bluetooth card was not working properly. 
as well as a couple of USB 1 issues. Um, they should have been fixed after root patching, which I don't understand, but my USB does work with the USB hub still. These are some issues that I can look into, um, do some more research, as well as make another video about. So definitely make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. I do have quite a bit more systems to cover and a lot of plans ahead for this channel. So definitely, definitely subscribe if retro tech is your thing. Thank you all for watching. I'm very excited to see you all next time. Peace.